just adding some people. Hey, Terry. Awesome, everybody's all come on in. This is perfect. Perfection. Hey, Tim. Just letting people join on in. Perfect. So first, what I want to do is I want to start this off by saying that the lives that I'm doing, the live streams, these live videos, um, going over these books are very successful. In fact, I'm exposing a lot about these criminals and the people that go out and attack my religion. They're, um, they're hurting pretty badly, which is good. Um, I like that a lot. Um, the reason why I like that is because... Um, I frown on people making money attacking people's religions. And just because you don't like somebody's beliefs doesn't mean that you need to go out and try to make your, um, try to make your life, your life about that. You know, if you don't like it, then move on, you know, move on, go do something else, go find an actual job, you know, stuff like that. That's just not what we need on this planet at this moment in time, um, or ever. Um, in an ethical planet, we you should we um, sane people should frown on insane people and even anybody um, going out and making money on attacking people's religions, beliefs, anything like that. Right? Hi, Mary. But um, on that on that point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on with these overviews. Um, we're going to go into more and more detail about things. It might rain while I'm doing this live. But that's totally fine because I'm going to sit here even if it pours and rains. Um, it's going to just be a fun little activity. I do want to show you some of the books that, I've, that I wrote, right? And then you can buy the whole entire set on my website at exposingcrimes.com. So here's the first book, The Truth About Apostates. It's just an introductory, um, basically, book that goes over, um, you know, the definition of an apostate, you know, and just the thing that you should know before you read the next book, right? The second book is Escaping Leah. This book literally just goes over, um, it's actually more in depth, right? And it goes over everything from all of the misconceptions that were talked about in, um, set from 2016 to 2019, and then this book goes over the whole entire history. It's called The Hidden Agenda. This is what we'll go over today. It's a pretty big book, as you can see. Huge. Um, it's very packed full of data, pictures, everything else. It's, it's amazing. You should definitely pick up all three books. It'll help the project out. And it'll also help you out by getting the data for yourself, as well as getting your friends the data and your family and all these other people that you know. Hi Fabrizio. Thanks for joining guys. Do appreciate it. So the first thing we're going to go over is the, the cover. These are all pictures. These are actual all evidence of the people that are, um, that are attacking the religion to call them out. Right? Um, and to say that, um, see, as you can see, if you look in, somebody being arrested because we did get somebody arrested because, you know, this is cri they're, they're criminals, so they have crimes, and we expose the crimes, and thus they end up going to jail kind of thing, right? Um, down here is, if you, you might have heard of the guy, his, he's a BBC reporter. Not anymore because we, of course, exposed what he was doing and he was fired. But um, this is one of his exposures. He basically had staged a um, an, a picture, I'm like well, staged a video um, at a at a fire exit of one of our church buildings in L.A., <laughs> which is hilarious, <laughs> right? So he staged a a thing and made it seem like we were ignoring him, but in actual fact we weren't. He just decided to throw in some random stuff um, just to create some chaos, which he ended up kind of being successful at, but then failed. 
What was his name? The reporter? His name was um, John Sweeney. Um, he's not a reporter anymore, anymore. Um, he exploded on national television, as, um, uh, and he's known um, to many who actually do... Oh, Bruce, yeah, definitely check that out. That's not a good sign. We'll definitely handle that. Yeah, we'll, I'm going to reach out to you at the end of this. Okay, buddy? Definitely going to handle that. Um, so basically, this book, right, um, goes over all of those people. Exposes it all. Hey, Bruce, I'm actually going to go ahead and um, I have that on my mind right now. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll reach out to you. I'll send you the ebooks for free because that actually occurred to you and uh, for you, and then we'll figure out where all those all those are. I'm Amazon has been giving me a little a little trouble because of this Corona whatever situation that's going on right now. So a lot of glitches and um, a lot of glitches and a lot of problems have been occurring with other orders as well. But we'll definitely 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 handle that, and I want to definitely get you these books. So I'll get you them ebook form right now as a free thing and then we'll go ahead and um, yeah we'll go ahead and track those down I'm pretty sure they're not too far away alright we'll go back to this Bruce definitely reach out to me let me know if that that works for you alrighty cool so the next thing um, we're just gonna go into the book so the book is called the hidden agenda this is what it looks like ta-da right so there's there's the cover and then there's the inside um, now, I do want to share with you, there are many chapters in this book. Many chapters. In fact, there's like, so there's different parts in this book that you'll go, whoa, what's going on? So there's a book one, there's a book two, there's a book three, and a book four, and I think there's even a book five in here. It's pretty packed full of information, as you can see, huge it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the introduction. The, well, the To the Reader. The To the Reader is this. This book was inspired by the author's previous works, The Truth About Apostates, The Scientology Story, and Escaping Leah. These works are referred to as exposés and are treated as such by legitimate researchers, executives, and experts. The information outlined in these books was developed solely from the discoveries and thorough research of Ryan Prescott. The reason for this information is to arm individuals with the truth as they progress in their religious activities and are confronted by incorrect data. It is from the author's viewpoint that false information is constantly disseminated throughout the mainstream media, social media platforms, and through the mouths of the uninformed, misinformed, and the ignorant. Therefore, the lies are more prevalent in a society that only believes in falsities and cannot do any honest research into any subject. This particular work is called The Hidden Agenda, due to the lack of correct information concerning why people turn into religious attackers. For the longest time, apostates of the Church of Scientology have employed Nazi-like principles to make you believe what they are saying. It may sound too insane to be true, it might also sound like I'm against the success of others. It may be interpreted in various ways. These are none of my concerns, and I didn't produce this property to be vilified or self-righteous. This work is in no way a guess or an estimate as to how and why these apostates operate. It's the exacting detail of how they operate and how they deal with the release of truth around the world. You may have a viewpoint that these individuals are righteous in their actions. They are above the law and other reasonings based on what you've heard. Now I could promise you that you could change your mind and escape the web of lies. I could say that reading this information could bring out some type of worldwide change. This would be up to you and your support of the truth. I won't make any promises. I know the impossible are just that, impossible. If I were to achieve a portion of the impossible, we'd have a better world. Therefore, the impossible would be to stop all religious hatred on this planet. That is an impossible target, and we're going to achieve a portion of that target. This is dependent on your support of the truth. This book is a, the result of seven years of experience dealing with the desperate attacks of the, of the apostate's cult, really. Right? Okay, and then it goes into... 
the cult that is run by Leia Romani and Mike Rinder and the rest of their posse. And doing this will only work with the sane. We won't work with the insane. And you won't regret getting this information. It doesn't matter if you're against or for religions. I believe in a world where those who are against a subject do not deserve to make a living attacking it. This is dishonest dealing, and it's not, and it's, and it's definitely what needs to change on this planet. I hope this can be viewed as a stepping stone towards frowning upon those who make their living tricking people and fooling them into believing their attacks are valid. Nazis did this to the Jews, and the KKK tries to do this with the African Americans. No matter your religion, walk of life, color, race, nationality, and any other form of classification, we should all be treated equally and not persecuted on a daily basis for what we believe. The same should take a stand against those who persecute others and demand they halt their dealings, but it shouldn't end with that demand. It should be an all-out exposure of their crimes for the education of the upcoming generations so they don't follow in their footsteps. The time has come. You acquired the largest work that has ever been released on the subject, but please be certain not to go past a word you don't have full understanding of. This could cause misunderstandings and even confusions and could potentially inhibit your ability to grasp the information contained in this book. And a glossary is provided for this purpose in the back of the book. So in the back of the book, there's a glossary. Again, I'll go over the whole entire book, just like last time. A lot of people did join in while I was reading. Thanks so much. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Owen. Hi, Ben. Dylan, I love you, man. You're amazing. Thanks so much for your support, dude. We're in this together. Jocelyn, thanks so much for joining. Amazing. Woohoo! Everybody, Alan's joining. Amazing. Okay, so cool. Basically, the first part of that book um, that you're going to be reading is book one, Leah and her crew, right? Now, what that goes into is um, her attacks and uh, what she said nicely about the religion publicly. So there it is. Ta-da! All in there. It's perfect. Um, now, here's, here's what's different about this, this book in comparison to this book, right? So there's two different kinds in this book, right? So this book's all about um, what the attackers are doing right now, right? Like, basically, that have done since 2016 and to 2019, and I expose it all in this book. This took a lot of time to make and to, uh, to investigate and to research and all this other stuff. This book is amazing. It's huge, as you can see. And then the next, the next book was this, The Hidden Agenda. I went into more detail about their activities um, and exposing them for their crimes, and this is actually intense. And I'll, I'll share with you some things, right? I give them a ger general understanding and uh, orientation and the strategy and stuff. So it's right here, this, this chapter right here, right? It's the aftermath of her, right? And which is great. So it basically goes into detail. It says, um, Leah was once in the church before she was expelled for not meeting their simple ethical standards. These standards are not uncommon and would be understood by any sane person. After Romini was expelled from the church, she involved herself in the apostate cult. And thus she began her demise that would shine for the insane to see. Romini has signed contract, worked out deals, and even burned many bridges with others. It's a sad set of circumstances, which could have been avoided if she simply took responsibility for her unethical conduct in the Scientology religion. Romini, not knowing a whole lot about the church procedures, decided to take it upon herself to put two demands out for money, um, totaling $1.5 million. This started a hate campaign, uh, which was launched in, um, as one of the biggest things in their well, the biggest things in the apostate history. This was step one, and the other steps were an escalation above these demands. So the whole entire strategy is right there. I expose it. Boom, bam. All coordinated, all great. See, and then, then so then, um, I put out the strategy. I'm going to actually go ahead and just um, read you what I, what I had found out in this strategy right here. It says, um, this is what they use, and this was actually exposed in 1980 by somebody who um, had escaped their web of lies in 1980. Can you imagine it's been going on for that long? People have been getting away with attacking religions since the 1980s. That's pretty scary. 
it's pretty gross because it shows you how nasty society has gone down the hole, right? So one, um, convince the insane that science... Remember, I told you, insane, right? That's all they're trying to convince is the insane, and all they want is the sane to also hop on the bandwagon, which that's not happening, right? Yeah, I know, Nicola, I know. So one, convince the insane that Scientology doesn't work and in, it isn't expanding and that others aren't interested in learning about it, right? But we all know that's not true because it is expanding and it is helping people, right? Two, work off of step one and release false press releases, blog posts, tabloid stories, and even coming, I mean, even conning news reporters with fake information. Three, rake in the money from both of these, deny any involvement in the results of these actions, they always project under the church what they're doing, right? So it's not us, it's them. Um, blame any and all conduct, bad conduct, right? Illegal conduct from the past and present under the church. Four, only work with those individuals that can be swindled onto this strategy easily and try to discredit or blatantly attack those who cannot be swindled, right? So the same, they get blatantly attacked. We get blatantly attacked because we're not falling for their lies because we're helping people, right? Five, focus on the areas where the Scientology religion is helping immensely. Start to attack those who are in power positions and get them to denounce Scientology to save their own public image or to sign on as an official backer of rent checks to the ta and tabloid laundry. So again, this is it. There's a five-step procedure that they, have rele that they released in a lecture in 1980 that was actually put out um, by the person that escaped their... Um, but escaped the apostate's grasp, right? So the attackers, um, he escaped them, which is amazing. Good job for him, but he passed on recently. Um, okay, cool. And then, so, and then I go into the imaginary war. It said there's a quote-unquote war in the minds of the attackers. They have conflicting information on every aspect of the church. Their only stable datum is, the only stable information is that Scientology has to be bad, right? Because they are bad themselves, right? So they have only that war inside their heads because they're insane. So they're like, ah, and it's eating at them. It's like a, it's like a parasite. Um, um, social media war strategy. You'll, you'll get this. You, when you get this book, you'll read this part and you'll go, whoa, that's what they're doing right now. So you'll win. You'll win from knowing this information. I do want to do one thing and say thank you to all of these people who are joined in. Nicola, thanks so much, Deborah, for joining in. I really don't know your name. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't want to. I don't want to mispronounce it. Um, Mr. Flores, thank you so much, and um, thanks so much, David, for joining on in. Amazing perfection. I just turned up my brightness because somehow it went down. Let me readjust. All right, cool. Um, and then I go in. So. Yes, that's, that's some gripping information, right? That's some information that you can use. You can go out there and use right now. But I definitely recommend reading this chapter because it goes over all of that. I did so much research for you. You didn't have to do it yourself. It's perfect. Then I go into what they don't know about and all of the church's expansion and the truth, right? The truth. I go into all of that. Then I go into the, the apostates and um, what their agenda is and stuff, right? So... Um, Now, in this book, I go over, like, how they, how they project, right? How they avoid responsibility. Hi, Karen. Thanks so much for the hearts and, um, and likes, everybody. But um, I go into... Yeah, so I go into how people, how these guys, um, how these attackers um, are projecting what they're doing under the church, right? Because they're doing stuff illegal, right? The attackers are doing things that are legal. They see that we're helping so many people as the church and as Scientologists and as people of faith that are of goodwill. Um, they see that we're doing well. They don't like that. They'd like to make it look like we're doing stuff that are bad because they are. If that makes any sense to you, take it or leave it. If you want to have me clarify that a little bit more, you can totally do that. Hey, Brett, thanks for joining on in. So I, I do introduce this, um, this chapter alone. Um, I do introduce it as I will be going down the list of all apostates that you may have heard or seen. So I want to basically make sure that these people, um, your friends, your family, whoever 
they have gotten bad information from. I want to really under I want to really have them understand um, what their crimes are and what they're doing, and I want to make sure that they understand the truth about these people because they make themselves seem so great, but they're not great. They're criminals, so we need to also expose them. That's why this is. That's why I wrote this chapter. I'll just read you these two these two lines right here. It says, "I will be going down the list of all apostates that you may have heard, may have heard of or seen." I'm not writing this for the purpose of making friends. Thus, I'll be blunt. So I go into that. Yeah, they're going insane, Ben. I mean, I have to. I, if I told you all of the things that they're doing right now, you'd 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 want to donate <laughs> all you could right now. <laughs> you'd wanna you you would know that this is basically almost it. The war is almost done. I mean, this planet is changing. Regardless of what's happening right now on the society and the situation, it is changing. Because of us speaking up and doing things about the society around us. That's the truth. Then I go into the definition of an apostate, right? And I have a picture. I have pictures in this book now, right? So I changed. I went from the first book, not having pictures. Second book, having a little bit of pictures. Third book, having pictures to show you examples and to show you you know, like, whoa, and orient you really fast. Um, now, this, this chapter right here, I went ahead and explained my own definition of an apostate to you, okay, so that you understood that this is the point that um, I have done seven and a half years of research plus on this point, um, on these people and what they do, and um, I wrote, like, I wrote some I wrote some good pages on this that I think you'd be interested in. Hi Carissa. Thanks for joining. Hope everything's going well over there. Um then I also wrote a chapter on the basis behind the destruction. Right? So So this is the basis. I'm going to share this with you cuz I think you'll like it. The basis behind the destruction is that the insane will take on the lies and deceptions and then spread it to the more and to spread it to more and more individuals. They think it'll be unstoppable. The apostates work with this in mind. They are constantly working on more ways to get their lies out there and invent more. They want to create a lie that'll stick with people for years and thus the sane will be tricked into believing it. Later, this will bar them from getting the truth about Scientology or any religious move movement for that matter. It's as simple as coming up with a topic that is mysterious. This is based on not enough information out not enough information out about it. Meaning that when you don't have information out about a subject, you tend to assume and you tend to bring up reasons why it's not there or reasons why um reasons why um that's happening or whatever, right? So if you don't have the information and you can't find it, you start you start um bringing in ways of why it's not there or whatever, right? Without getting the data. Um, so this is based on not enough information out about it. And then taking it over to pervert it. So basically perverting, perverting it by assuming that you know it because you think that you know it, right? So it's very confusing. But if you think about it, it's very common sense related. Um, Perversion is simply done by constant streams of misinformation and inventing allegations. For example, someone could raise one million dollars and then leave the room accomplishing this goal. Then, the attacker, when the fundraiser isn't around, would say he just did it because he'll get a cut of the money raised. When the insane get a hold of the wrong information, it'll stick with them and they'll believe it and take it on as their own Bible. Thus they will spread it far and wide through their limited friends and their limited reach. But they'll spread it out there, and the insane will gravitate towards believing it's the truth. So again, I go into more, into, go into more detail about it. I give, you, I give you this fact down here. It says, hopefully you'll, you'll, you don't go around, you don't go through the above thought process. If you go through this process, you're probably not go going to understand this book. And I'll find a treat from you regarding the hip hypocrisy in which I have involved myself. You know, like assuming. Real situations have solutions. 
fake situations have no solutions. You'd think that this would go without explaining, but sadly it needed to be stated for the apostates. This is a sad state of affairs. You cannot prove a negative. This is insanity, and it is used to attack people of faith and entities in courts around the world. Please understand that when you are being told, what you are being told in this book is only the wake-up call you've, you'll ever receive on the subject. So, and then I also go into the threat of speaking up. I would know this more than anybody else. <laughs> I, I could tell you some weird stuff. But that's the threat of speaking up. You, you go through people who are going to threaten you, who are going to try to silence you, who are going to try to harass you, only for you to stop exposing them. But what you do is you just continue because you're getting somewhere. Um, now, I wanted to... I wanted to share, share with you this fact, right? I mean, these, these three little things that I included in the thread of speaking up. This is, the, this is the reason why the attackers hate me, right? And of course they would, because I'm exposing them. Um, so I said, have you ever spoken up about something? Have you ever spoken up about something that you're passionate about? Pretty sure you have. I don't doubt you have. I'd like to share with you what happens when I speak up. This can be used as an example of how passionate and factual people are often silenced and harassed. Here are some of the things I've done in my short life compared to the time I have left in this body. Founded a so I founded a successful and independent social media network exposing the truth about those who are attacking religions, especially my church. This network I founded was called the Truth Network. Two, worked, with, uh, worked at a church of Scientology for seven years. I held various functions, and I loved it. Three, volunteered over 10,000 hours into my community of my religion, disaster response, cleanup, education, and activism, and much more. I recently volunteered at, via, via disaster response at Car Fire, um, Butte Fire, Delta Fire, Milepost Fire, Hurricane Florence, Hurricane Michael, and the Alabama tornadoes. There are many other accomplishments, but this property isn't about me. I always hold the rest to save time. Right? So then I go around and, and, I, and I do state some things that they'll say. Right? I'll, I'll state, they state some things that, um, that they, try to make, they try to make me feel bad. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't fall for it. Right? I wanted to make sure my microphone was good. <laughs> Um, so then there's that, and then I go into more, more detail. It says, it doesn't take a lot to stand your ground. I've taken so many hits and taken so much precaution that even if something occurs, the individuals who actually perpetrated the act are caught. I respond to only threats. I respond only to threats and valid forms of harassment that can be reported to the authorities with full documentation. I provide the authorities with all the information, and I don't pick or choose what is shared, unlike the apostates. All of the time, the attacker is alerted of their misconduct or confronted with the charges by the respected law enforcement officers. I've had to do thorough research on individuals who come after me, and I've used platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, Google, Reddit, and others to gather this information that would be presented to law enforcement officers in the next 24 or 48 hours. So stand up for yourself, find a safe space to speak up, don't stop, regardless of what the cowards state about you. Perfect, right? So then I go into the hidden agenda, I go ahead and just touch on that topic, so there it is, boom, 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 I go into it all, I'm going to save that for you, it also has the goal of the attackers in there, you're going to love. Um... Oh yeah, this is the beautiful, this is the beautiful chapter. It's called The True Tactic. Yeah, The True Tactic, right there. See it? The True Tactic. So, um... Yeah, so basically, I go into more and more detail. I said, um... I'm going to give you an example of The True Tactic so that you understand, okay? Because I don't want to read you the whole entire chapter because it would take a little while. So I said an example would be, I'm the CEO of a company that is giving kids toys for Christmas. I've helped millions of kids receive toys for free, and it brings smiles to their faces. 
One day, the CEO of an antidepressant company looks at my organization and finds that there are no depressed kids. He gets angry. He must find a way to stop these kids from being happy so that he can get them onto some drugs. He comes up with an attack campaign against my cause, calls me a fraud, a scam, tells people that I only started this company to make money off of the kids, and many other lines that later can be used against me by others. I end up losing some kids to this campaign leveled against me as a result. Kids are lining up for drugs, which will later give them side effects they weren't expecting. That was the end of the example, right? So it goes over to more. So the tactic is very blatantly understood in here. Very, I laid it all out for you. It's very straightforward. Um, also, I go into more detail about why, they, why the attackers go ahead and deflect because they have done many of the things they say that we have done. Makes no sense, right? So I explained, I explained it. Now, unlimited financial backing. Though the apostates and the attackers have always stated that they have unlimited financial backing. Now, what does that actually mean? So the apostates have recently stated that they have unlimited financial backing. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Let's break it down. <laughs> We're going to go back into the history of special interests and their hate against religions. You've probably heard of it before and pushed it off as a conspiracy theory. Yeah, definitely, Terry, definitely. We all go through it. We're all good people. We all go through attacks because the, um, there are certain people that are on this planet that hate help, that don't want people to get helped because they have an agenda. So we need to stop that agenda. So I said, we're going to go back in history of the special interests and their hate against religions. You've probably heard of it before and pushed it off as a conspiracy theory. The families that are behind the destruction of religions are the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, George Soros, and their connections. These individuals have developed various organizations to control these anti-religion plans. These organizations will never openly admit to being inspired, sponsored, or otherwise supported by the above individuals or parties. I can name a few for you. Ready for this? I'm going to name the, um, the three organizations that are right here that were started and founded um, only to go after religions and people who help. Freedom from religion, that's actually an organization. Just think of that. Freedom from religion. Yeah, their, their job is to take you away from religions. Yeah, that's sad, huh? Satanism, definitely another one. And American, America Media Incorporated. These are all entities that hate religion due to the peace it brings to communities. Religions bring peace and sanity to millions and thus bar any chaos to report. So there we go. And then it goes into why they attack the church and why they attack religions in general and um, goes into more and more data. It also exposes where they get their money from. And then I go in to the actual target. Now, many people can't even um, confront the actual target. And that's just something that people are going to need to confront to be able to handle that. I know, I know, Terry, I know. <laughs> I get a kick out of this because um, I like exposing. I like exposing crimes. It's something that I like to do because I'm very good at it. And I, um, I'm a bulldog when it comes to, you know, holding my ground and standing it and um, not wavering from it and um, keeping everybody close by as a movement to, um, what is it, to help more people and to um, push farther out there. So the actual target, you're not going to believe what is written in this chapter. This is a rough study of it. This has taken so much for me to share this data with you. Please ensure you have your investigation cap on. You're going to need it goes into the theory. What is the theory behind this study? What came to it? Let's be real. You and I know that there's something fishy happening behind the scenes. Scientology is effective. It does help people and has shown proof of this through day-to-day -day lives of Scientologists and those who study something from Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard developed precise techniques to improve the lives of individuals everywhere. Mr. Hubbard is recognized as a genius to those who are sane enough to look for themselves. 
Mr. Miscavige has only forwarded this vision and verified that the scriptures are 100% true to what Mr. Hubbard wrote. Here we are looking at the effect effectiveness of Scientology. Let's break it down, right? And then I break it down for them so that they understand. And then I do the first point, the second point, the third point. I go over who's attacking it, what's attacking it, why is it attacking it, and so on and so forth. Um, then I go into, I'm doing, I did a profile on a, on, a, um, on a suppressive person, right, which is an attacker. I did a profile on all of his crimes and um, all of the statements that he made in, um, in court to expose his crimes, which is really funny. Um, one of the things I do want to make a point of is that um, one of the misconceptions is that, oh, well, he was in the church, so he wrote a, an affidavit because he was a church member or whatever. Nope. No, nope, that's that's we didn't we didn't tell him to write a we didn't tell him to write an affidavit. He wrote an affidavit on his own willingness. This is this is um he was asked in a deposition in 2011 to verify this one point, and this is what he says. So we asked him a question. It was wasn't always your practice to present the truth to courts in affidavits and declarations, was it, sir? Of course it was. Deposition, right? So there it is, all in writing. Now, um, then he also exposes the, the um, in an affidavit, again, under penalty of perjury in the, in the United States of America, he states, the tactic is as transparent as it is unconscionable, Unco sorry, unconscionable, spread venom in the hope that the victims of the hate campaign will eventually be forced to buy their silence. So the church can get on with its real purpose of expanding the Scientology religion and helping more people. Whew. Sorry, I have a dry mouth. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense. So it's um, Mike Rinder affidavit. So he's an apostate of the church, um, but he exposed what he was doing and he exposed what his friends and you know his, his fellow apostates are doing as well, right in an affidavit. So you can share that with everybody and make people understand that what, he's, what these people are saying ain't real. They all just want money. They don't have a job. They don't have an actual sane, productive job. This is, um, this is, their, this is, how, they make their, this is how they make a living, which is very, very sad. But that's how criminals act, right? So we need to stop them. Um, also exposed that, he, um, that this one apostate beats his wife and, ex and, um, and steals a bunch of stuff. And um, after, he, after he became an apostate, he started lying in court and contradic contradicting affidavits, um, statements under penalty of perjury. And definitely something will come out of that. Trust me, there's something in the works. Um, and then I go into more detail here. Um, now, something you need to understand. There is an, a secret little thingamadude here. Backpage. You guys have probably heard of Backpage. Now, I'm, I want to save you some time. I'm just going to state it really quickly. So, um, the apostates um, are hiding their association with Backpage.com. Um, the reason why I say that is because I have the facts in here. Um, their public relations officer was, a, was the public spokesperson for Backpage. Yes. Take that in for a second. And he escaped. Like, what is it? A month or two before the feds went in. And he got away with... Um, he, he basically got away with a payment to, um, to last five years without getting... Without, without a job. And he's just making up that money now because it's been a little while since that occurred. So in 2021, or maybe even, maybe he just drank it all away. But just understand, this is what he says publicly. In 2011, the public relations officer of the apostates, this is what he says about Backpage when he was the public relations officer. He says, the people I work for were smart enough to start Backpage.com. This is what he said in 2011. And New York Times even says some stuff about him, too. Um, the Daily Pan so this is what the Daily Cannibal says about this apostate and his affiliation with um, Backpage.com. 
So I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to. I don't want to um, promote this this coward because he needs to just face his crimes in court because his um, bosses have as well, and there's no reason why he shouldn't. So this person takes two teenagers already brutally raped by thugs and editorially sodomizes them by appropriating their identities, putting their lies and putting putting lies in their mouths and pimping them as shameless opportunists who would do anything for a buck. Then he writes another fabrication claiming the fictional reporter was fired. That's by the Daily Cannibal. It's not by me. It's not by any of my friends. It's by the Daily Cannibal. Okay? So, um, I exposed it. There it is. It's a done deal. I also have a huge communication by an, from an interview that um, one of the, I told you yesterday, well, sorry, I keep saying yesterday, the last live about the escaping Leah, I told you in there that um, a guy had escaped their web of lies, right? The apostates and the attacker's web of lies. Um, this was the guy, and he actually goes into more detail about his affiliation, the, um, the, his, the, um, the apostate's public relations representative right now, his relationship with Backpage and how he got away with it. And um, pretty weird, huh? Now, that was it. That was book one of this huge book. Book two goes into book and uh, um, media and ethics, right? So it's book two, media and ethics, goes into more detail about that goes into corruption sponsoring hate mongers. This goes into um, A&E Network and what they did to, um, to um, attack the church. And um, they're now exposed and their attacks are now canceled. So there, there's a whole chapter on them as well. So it goes into corruption sponsoring hate mongers as an introduction. Then it goes over to A&E Networks. Gives you more information about that. You should totally read the chapter. Um, they even, I also, somebody who's getting paid by, um, A&E, um, this exposes, this is a check, right, of, um, about th over $3,000 to go out and attack your religion. Um, it says this total comes, so it says below is a picture of a check received by a former member of the Word of Faith Fellowship a massive religion in North Carolina. The total comes to $3,335 for a scripted interview by the producers and writers of, of the a and &E Network to slander the Word of Faith Fellowship in North Carolina. The contract would be signed signifying the execution of the interview and the confidentiality of, of behind-the-scenes operations. So they paid him off, but he never did it. So he, he ended up just giving the money back. Um, pretty interesting, huh? There it is, and then it goes into the buzzword factory, right? So this is what they always operate on. The, um, the attackers always operate off of buzzwords. The media does as well. It's, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Um, also another quote by the apostate that is, um, you know, basically already confessed to his crimes publicly, and even in an affidavit. So it's like, I don't know what he's talking about. But um, this is what he also says in the, um, in the, well, actually, no, he said this to BBC. This is really funny. He was um, telling BBC while he was in the church because um, he was really, really angry at what they were saying, lies-wise. Um, he says, that's how you manipulate news. That's how you manipulate news. While hypocritically stating that others don't want news coming out, and that you have a duty to inform your readers, you make sure they don't get all of the information, but only get your pre-digested vomit. Interesting, huh? That's by the, that's by the, um, the apostate. Pretty interesting. There's just one. Now, I did something really awesome for you guys, okay? It, was, it took me a little while, but I helped you out, okay? I helped you out. So when you're talking to people out on the street, or you're talking to people um, in life, um, or you're talking to your friends, your family, associates, whatever, and they say a line about um, what they think 
the the church is, right? They say a line of like, oh, well, they're just idle or whatever, right? I have different statements here for you and how to handle them. Woohoo! See? So there you go. Right in there. That's one of the chapters that's on page 75 of this book. You can go into more detail about that a little later. Um, it just basically exposes it all. Then I go into the internet trolls. So there it is, the internet trolls. You're going to find a lot of these people. That's all, of, that's all the attackers do is they sit on the computer and they have no life. They have no job. I know I'm being harsh, and that's, it's because it's the truth. If I, weren't, if I weren't stating the truth, they wouldn't get exposed. They wouldn't stop what they're doing. Or, they wouldn't, um, or, the, or the sane people wouldn't stop um, believing them. That's what it is. So, um, I, here's what I state in here, right? I said, these individuals lack employment. Yeah, so there's two points I'd like, uh, I'd like you to take into consideration. One, these individuals lack employment. Thus, they're not contributing members of society. They have all of the time in the world to invent stories and post about them. Two, yeah, the photos they post are utter nonsense and consist of the above point focusing on photo editing. And then I also added a third one as a bonus. It says their crazy viewpoint has to do with these two points in effect and being repeated numerous times over until they create a hashtag using their 400 bot accounts divided by 20 or so people leading the unemployment movement. Um... They are more prevalent on platforms which fail at filtering hate speech. These platforms are Quora, Twitter, and Instagram. You'll find many on Reddit trashing the church as they found a platform full of the unemployed and the unsuccessful and the anti-religious. It's a pretty sad platform. It definitely had potential to be something more than hateful and discriminatory. The apostates love to make it seem like the church is after these platforms. They make it seem like Scientology is losing these platforms and that there are barely any people interested anymore. There are tens of thousands of sane individuals viewing the live streams put out by the church on Twitter and Periscope. There are hundreds of thousands viewing Scientology TV live on YouTube every week. Millions are visiting the church's website, social media accounts, and even their live streams across all major platforms. If anything, Scientology has the most number of viewers than any time in history. The apostates don't even compare in the number of viewers Scientology has every week. As a point of fact, Scientologists are always working with their communities and attending services at their local Church of Scientology. They don't have, any, they don't have countless hours to spend on social media, as they're always working and helping people 24-7, basically. You'll find that some Scientologists are on a couple times a day to check things out, like some posts, and share updates. This is really what it's like. Scientologists are disinterested in spending their lives in front of a screen while the world is in need of help. And then I go into more detail about all the platforms. You guys can go and check that out. There's also a picture of all of the awards that Scientology TV has received. It's insane. Look at them all. I mean, that's incredible, right? Um, that was just since, since it's opened, which is insane, right? And I also tell, tell more information about, um, yeah, I basically tell more information about other platforms like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and so on and so forth. But I do want to say one thing. I don't, I don't like psychology, right? I don't like it. I don't like psychiatry. I don't like psychology, but this guy made a good point. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say this, right? It says, repetition makes the fact seem more true, regardless of whether or not it is. Well, whether it is or not. Understanding this effect can help you avoid falling for propaganda. His name's Tom Stafford. He was a, he's, he's a psychologist, right? Coolness. So then I also go into comedians and um, what, I, what, I, what I know and what I think we should all unite behind because I get that comedy's funny and that we shouldn't take jokes seriously or whatever, but it actually feeds into that other hand of repetition makes the fact seem more true. Regardless of whether it is or not, understanding this effect can help you avoid falling for propaganda. 
by the psychologist, right? It gives you a better understanding of all of that because you should understand that, you know, comedians, they're only coming off of, they're like us, right? They're you and I. They're not anybody special. Um, yeah, they're cool and they're funny, right? But they're like you and I. Um, so are artists and so are everybody else, right? But you have to understand that you, um, you're going to be listening to what they've heard as well because they're like us. We walk throughout society. We hear some things here and there about, you know, different topics or whatever. And um, we start to assume that that's probably the truth. But in actual fact, when somebody looks um, at it for themselves, they find out that it's not the truth and that it was just a joke. So I think they need to understand that anything coming from a comedian or a cartoon is, is not true. It's just a joke. I go into BBC and how they staged, um, staged um, videos... Right? So, like, in regards to this, it says, there's the main entrance, right, of the church's production studio. BBC showed up at an unmanned back exit that's never used, and it's not manned. And they filmed this, and we exposed them, and we took a picture from our surveillance cameras of what that was all about. So we have that picture in here. Um, again, here's another picture, just to prove... Just to prove it, this is, by the way, this guy, this reporter, is now working with the apostates. So do not think that he's a way away. He's still working. He's actually working with them now, like exclusively. And, yeah, of course, they're just, you know, slimy and stuff. But he's doing this at a, this is a fire exit of one of the church's buildings in L.A. Um, the, the reporter, see, he's like, he's like trying to act like he's on the phone saying, let me in or whatever. But in actual fact, there's a hallway in the back that's actually just a fire exit. See, it's not, it's not, it's not the church at all. Um, then he likes to say, and then the, uh, one of the apostates, they like, one of the apostates says that, oh yeah, you know, I knew everything about it and whatever. No, you can see he was just delivering coffee. Here he is right here. Here's the reporter. Here's the actual real um, church spokesperson. His name's Tommy Davis, but he's no longer the Scientology spokesperson. We have like seven now, which is amazing. Um, they're all incredible people. But um, you, got, you got the apostate right here who likes to claim that he was part of this all and he was the international spokesperson and all this other stuff, but he wasn't. He's just over here as the assistant delivering coffee and tea. If you don't believe me, um, I'll show you a picture. Of him right over here. He's got coffee and tea behind him. Over in this table over here. So he. Yeah the international spokesperson. Went ahead and asked the reporter a question. And then he wanted tea or whatever. And this guy went to go get it. He's the assistant. Now he's an apostate. Because he, he just did a bunch of horrible crimes in the religion. So we had to get him out of here. Because it was just gross. We don't like criminals. Um, I could tell you so many different instances. You'll see. Here's a picture of him actually delivering coffee and tea. The guy who now thinks he's, you know, all that in a bag of chips, but he's really not. Um, so there's that. Um, I go into more detail about that reporter I was talking about, BBC, the BBC reporter. He, um, he committed over 180 violations to the journalistic code. So um, there's a whole picture on that. It was actually from a BBC program, which is hilarious, because they did an expose on their own former reporter. <laughs> it's really funny. They had to because there was so much attention on it. It was unbelievable. And I go into more detail about, you know, more, more, of, the, more of the apostates. I go into more detail about HBO. If you've ever heard of their crappy, their crappy station, it's gross. I go into more detail about that. Um, and then I go into lit litigation and tricking, well, misleading the, um, misleading the general public, right? And I go into more detail about the trick to litigation and how they use it against them. I mean, they use it against us. Um, I go into more detail about that and how they make money and just, it's gross. It's nasty. But 
Also, I have an affidavit statement in here that exposes it all because this person, um, she really, she really stood up and she really um, admitted that what she did was wrong. And um, she came out with another statement and it kind of exposed everything, which is great. So it's all in here for you. Um, I called this mission perjury right here. Mission perjury um, goes into more detail. There's the definition of perjury. Um, I go into, I go into the um, affidavit statement again. Many different affidavit statements in this in this chapter in these chapters. I don't really um, weigh my words that that I mean that um. It's not common for me to weigh the words, at all. I'm very much straightforward, and I want to make my point quickly. That's what it is. So, um, many different... Yeah, there's just many different affidavit statements in here. But then there's also this statement from um, an Oxford University professor. He says, Neither the objective sociolog... Wow. Let me just go ahead and start that from the beginning, okay? Neither the objective researcher nor the courts of law can readily regard the apostate as a credible or reliable source of evidence. He must always be seen as one whose personal history predisposes him to bias. Dr. Brian Wilson of Oxford University. Yeah, so you just kind of just understand that point really well on that. And then um, I wanted to make a point on that too. Here's an example. It says, in Portland, Oregon, I was volunteering with the church, with my church. There was an individual that had walked by and muttered under his breath, I really didn't like Scientology. You shouldn't either, right? I stopped this fellow, dead in his tracks, with this response. Maybe you shouldn't keep complaining about a religion you probably have never really studied. You were around for the wrong reasons, if you were ever around. My response to him didn't cause him any harm as it made him think about what, what he said earlier. He and I spoke for a good 10 minutes. He attended, he attended and did some courses before and heard some gnarly rumors about Scientology from his friends. I communicated with him and really listened to him. He actually convinced himself to give it another try, and this time without listening to the rumors. So these apostates have no basis in fact, and their claims are easily thrown out of sane minds. The insane will continue to hold them as fact because it makes sense somehow to them. I want to take a break and say hi to everybody. Hi, Mike. Hi, Frederic. Frederike. Um, hi, Eton. Hi, Andreas. Hi, Tom. Thanks all for joining in. Super appreciate it. Hi, Steve. Hi, Natalia. Hi, Rob. Do you want to make a point before I continue? Um, this book is this long. As you can see, it's super thick. You're going to love it. You're actually going to look at this book and kind of um, probably drool over it. Um, all three books, again, all three books are at a discounted price on my site because I'm not into making like millions of dollars. But um, here it is. Right? I'm just trying to get the truth out there. We got three books here. Boom, 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 boom. As you can see. And look how thick those are. I mean, look at all that information, guys. I mean, that is insane. That is insane. So all of that right there, exposingcrimes.com. I, I did all the work. <laughs> You're going to love the data. But um, I go into one of the cases that they tried to win and they lost. Um, and then the... There's another book, book four, The Church Fights Back, right? So Scientologists are just standing up, speaking out more, um, speaking out more about how Scientology helps them. As you can see, the Scientology Network is doing all of that. <laughs> and then also social media, we're all talking about the church, and it's just amazing. It's amazing stuff. Um, I go into more, to, more of the misconceptions um, in, in this chapter a little bit, kind of Fighting back with actual information, data, facts, court, court records, um, backed, up, backed up data completely. Like, you're going to love it. You're going to read it and go, wow. Um, more about, you know, the obsession. Then there's also this is numbers thing, right? The numbers. The numbers of the membership of the church, they're in the millions. 
Not many people know how to find that information out. I give it to you in this book. Go check it out. Um, and then I go into book book five, um, Flag Florida Clearwater. If you guys don't know what flag is, it is the um, basically. Let me let me let me go ahead and say it. It is the it's the spiritual cathedral in Clearwater, Florida for the church, right? It's the religious cathedral. It's, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. Um, you'd actually, if you went to go visit it, you'd, you'd actually, your jaw would drop. It's, it's incredible. But I, I go into detail about like our, the, the church's viewpoint, right? Okay. And, um, what the church does there and also how big Clearwater is how the church helps. Um, and then I clear up this major misconception that many people don't even know. So I clear it up because the apostates like to share, you know, horrible information, which doesn't really make any sense because it's false anyway. But there's also like, it tells you how much money this guy, this guy was the, the um, investor of the apostates for all of the attacks in Clearwater from the past. And um, he came out and he exposed um, the apostates for what they've done. And he said, I never want to be part of it ever again. And he, there's affidavit statements, meaning penalty, like he's statements he made under penalty of perjury in the United States, which you'll love. You'll hear a lot more about. If you live in Clearwater or if you've ever read the Tampa Bay Times, <laughs> it's such a fake magazine. It's such a fake newspaper. So I go into more detail about that. I don't want to go into it completely, but there's this reporter that just, it's just, <laughs> it just makes me laugh how they're still around. They cut close to 200 staff from their ranks from 2015 to 2019. This is how horrible they are. They're, they're failing. Like, they should just be shut down. Like, that's honestly my, my viewpoint on this. And December 2018, they sold their landmark building in Tampa Bay for around $40 million, okay? So now they only have, like, they're only operating off of, in, in two rooms. <laughs> it's the saddest thing you'll ever see. It. They just deserve it. I mean, they suck. They always, they always attack religions. They don't put out any real information, and they just hate help. Um, the Times owes over $100 million in loans, and they still haven't paid it back, and they're actually, it's, 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 it's um, increasing. The number is increasing, which is kind of sad. Um, sad in a way because it doesn't really improve the economy of Clearwater or Tampa Bay at all. So that's, that's a whole chapter in itself you're going to love. You're going to go into more detail about that. The Clearwater Testament in its own chapter, I go into more detail about why the apostates are there. It's because it's safe and we're actually doing something there and we're helping people. And they can't even toss that fact up, which is pretty funny. Um, like, you could choose any part in the world to live. Okay? Any part. We didn't tell them to move into Clearwater, Florida. We didn't at all. We don't need apostates in, um, in areas where things are doing well. Because they're just dirty and slimy and they're criminals. So, that's my view on that. Then I go into... Um, the various different ways that we help. I do want to read these things off to you because I think this is going to be really cool for you to know about what, what the church does in Clearwater. Um, these, are the, these are the results of the church and Scientologists' help in Clearwater and the Tampa Bay area. This was from statistics in 2014 alone. This has also increased tremendously. $917 million is the impact in Clearwater and the surrounding region. Okay, the church has an impact of $917 million. That was just in 2014 alone. We create over 7,500 jobs, each with an average annual income of about $45,000. The direct spending on goods and services for church operations total over $54 million in Clearwater. Businesses owned or operated by Scientologists in Clearwater and the in the expand in the in the um, surrounding area. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Clearwater and the surrounding area 
have revenues had revenues of two hundred eighty eight million dollars money that is used to hire employees and purchase materials and expertise Scientologists annually contributed eighty seven point eight million dollars to charitable endeavors uplifting the quality of life in Clearwater church residents spent hundred million dollars annually on housing for no fifty seven point nine million dollars on household expenses and thirty nine point five million dollars on shopping in Clearwater alone guys tell me just point out one fact why don't you go ahead and tell me if if the Tampa Bay Times is doing that why don't you tell me if the apostates have any numbers relating to millions of dollars going towards um, going towards the uplifting of the Clearwater Clearwater area why don't you tell me if they're spending thirty nine point five million dollars on shopping hundred point three million dollars annually on housing I mean geez the church pays property and tourist taxes um, of three point one million dollars that was just in 2018 but they're paid by the church every year and on time and um, very willingly because we love to support Clearwater 27,000 Scientologists come to flag and flag every year in Clearwater 15,000 15,000 are residents of Clearwater the church acquired the abandoned Clearwater County Services Station and transformed it into the Fort Harrison Park the park is open to the community and tourists. The church purchased and renovated the abandoned Coachman building to serve as the church's headquarters for staff training and spiritual enhancement for those working at Flag. If you haven't seen that building, it is beautiful. It adds to the just the 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 beauty of that amazing city. Um, the church purchased and renovated the abandoned the city abandoned Clearwater Bank building. It now stands as the Church of Scientology Public Information Center for the Clearwater community and tourists. The church acquired close to 10 abandoned buildings and renovated them to serve as central buildings to encourage volunteerism for human rights education, drug education, criminal reform, character building, and more. The church acquired and renovated the abandoned West Coast building to serve as the building where church executives meet with city officials, religious officials, and other people from around the world to carry out projects to help better mankind. Acquired and renovated the abandoned Sandcastle Hotel, and it now stands at the church's spiritual enhancement facility for the upper spiritual levels of, a, of spiritual levels of awareness. So you get the idea. The church does a lot for the community and preserves historical landmarks while putting them to use. They also advocate for volunteerism, clocking in over. 200,000 hours every single year in the Clearwater and Tampa Bay community. So you can definitely see the benefits of Scientology's help and the indisputable expansion Clearwater is experiencing. So there that is. Hi, Emily. Hi, Ricardo. So that was only, a, that was only page 184. Okay? Now, I go into more detail about how the apostates kind of drag on this, this attack and why they're just not as successful. <laughs> okay, and then my favorite part that I wanted to, the, the reason why I even made this book, um, one of the key points, I wanted to make this a separate book, but then I was like, you know what, I want to keep this as, I want to keep this here, right? So book six. Book six is Myths Debunked. I go into detail about everything from our social media, uh, well, our, our public relations Right, so it goes into Scientology Media Productions, um, where the books are where the books are um, available. Then I also tell you, and I answer all the questions. Remember, all coordinated. Wink. Um, I go into detail about was L. Ron Hubbard a science fiction author, right? And I go into more detail about that. For instance, my answer to that was, he wasn't just a science fiction author. He wrote various genres. From fantasies, westerns, popular fiction, romance, and many other genres, right? And then, why did L. Ron Hubbard write fiction? Um, did L. Ron Hubbard serve in the, in the Navy? Um, I also touch on rumors, right? So I touch on rumors, and I tell you my answer to them based on my research, and I give you information on that. Um, general buzzwords and lines, I go over that per affidavits as well. 
and um, transcripts and stuff, which is super great. I go into detail about Scientology today, kind of gives you more information about that. I go into detail about the tax exemption status, and I go ahead and tell you more about how we got that and um, what it means and the whole entire story. Um, it even includes David Miscavige's um, affidavit that he made on that topic, which is super great. You'll love it. Um, donations, where they go in the church, boom. Um, another, another question is, is Scientology purchasing Clearwater? That is a fallacy. I go into more detail about that. Um, I even go into detail about what the Urban Land, Urban Land Institute says about it. Um, the actual meaning of the apostate statements, I go into detail about what they mean when they say things to you. Like, um, when they say, let's see, yeah, when they say, hey, look, you believe in aliens, it's like, that's not true, right? So the thing which you would say, I mean, the thing that you would have to know is this. One, there's two points on this, right? One, this individual has just read some false information on Scientology from an attack website and simply would like to prove that he or she knows more than you but in actuality, there's no such belief in aliens in the church. The materials that are online on attack websites are simply stolen confidential materials that have been altered to convince individuals that this is what Scientology believes in, and thus will turn them away from doing any services. Then the second point is this. If, they, if, that's not the, if, if you see that that's not the point that they were trying to make, there's this other context, and it says... Another context is this individual is testing your knowledge in Scientology. Don't fall for their trap as this person isn't legitimately interested. Neither is the first person. But this person will not believe you due to their lack of intelligence. And there's so many others. I like, I, I list it all out. Now if I were to go through this whole entire book, which I did basically in some of it, uh, take about a year. So I'm going to just basically show you that in the back of the book there's an affidavit. Affidavit of different... Um, apostates again. Um, they are confessing their crimes. This person confesses to promiscuity, and um, this person confesses to all of his crimes in um, in an affidavit form, and how people operate. Um, so you'll love it. You'll read through it. You'll get the data for yourself. You can show your friends. It's also signed by him as well. Bam. Okay, and then this one's a little different than all the other books because this one has their friends and family members. Boom, they come out and they're telling you all about them. If you don't believe it by me, if you don't believe it by the um, data, the data I'm giving you, you can believe it by their ex-wives, by their brothers, by their sons, by their daughters. Okay, you can find it out for, them, for yourselves. I also highlighted for you all of the things that you should focus on the most. Um, um, there's colleagues I mean there's friends there's former friends there's colleagues there's so many different other people I mean there's a whole it's like 10 different 10 different people that come out and say it for you and show you the data for yourself there's a glossary in the back it's packed full of information you'll love it huge I also have references in the back, which is amazing. Um, and then I also list out my other books. Bam. So, there it is, guys. I did it. You did it. We all made it through. We all, we all can read these books now and get the information for ourselves. This is The Truth About Apostates, Escaping Leah, and The Hidden Agenda. All of these books are available on my website, exposingcrimes.com. You can get them at a discounted rate. Super great. Um, this is how massive the amount of information is. There it is. Huge, massive amounts. All for you. All for your, um, all for your taking. You'll love it. Um, if you guys have any questions or you guys want to go on some sort of um, dissemination campaign with me and get the information out there, I'm totally willing to help you out with that. And let's just let's unite together and make this happen. These books are definitely 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 important for everybody to read these criminals are being stopped as we speak um sane people are waking up insane they'll never wake up don't even worry about them um definitely going through a lot um of, of attacks after doing these lives and i'm loving it because it means that i'm actually doing something and helping people i'm giving you the information for yourself 
Um, very happy that um, I have you on my friends list, and I'm very happy that I have you on the movement. If you guys have any questions for me, you guys can definitely message me. I'll answer it as soon as I can. Um, yeah, I super appreciate it. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. And um, if you're watching this over again, let me know. Um, and if you guys have any questions, that's totally fine. Alrighty, thanks so much, Nicola. And if you guys have any questions or any um, concerns or any or anything, or if you guys need any help with um, any communications that you guys would like answered, go ahead and reach out to me. I'm totally here to help. And um, go ahead and visit exposingcrimes.com. Again, that's exposingcrimes.com. Thank you so much again. You guys will totally help me in making this happen if you guys get your set and then buy your friends some sets. And if you guys want an ebook, I'm totally down to sending you one. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks, guys, for everybody who's joined, everybody who was here, everybody who's not here anymore. I definitely appreciate it. Um, you guys are amazing. We're doing this together. And um, I'm signing off for now. Uh, hopefully you guys join me in the live, in the two lives to um, Saturday and Sunday. Tomorrow with Sarah Nadler, human rights advocate, and Paul Morvenko, marketing professional. We're just going to do an interview. It's going to be a quick interview, but it's going to be really nice, very straightforward, good data to have on human rights and religious freedom. I love it. Thanks so much, guys. Talk to you guys soon.